Hi, my name is Alex Cabrera. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University, and today I'm joined by Alex Boyelle, who's a PhD student at Ulm University in Germany. Um, today we'll be talking about work we did while interning at Apple during the summer of 2021. AI systems are becoming significantly more capable and are being applied to everything from automated image captioning to 3D scene recognition. These advances are primarily due to large deep learning models trained on massive data sets. To effectively chain these complex models, large multifunctional teams are often needed to cover everything from data collection to research, quality assurance, and product management. To understand what these AI systems have learned, various stakeholders use machine learning interfaces. These are details or visualizations describing both data sets and models. For example, when training a model, researchers and ML engineers may use widgets in computational notebooks um, to do anything from plotting losses to looking at data distributions. Another common machine learning interface is web dashboards. These are often used by data labeling teams or quality assurance engineers to monitor and debug issues in either data sets or models. Lastly, there are a variety of documentation methods that exist to track details about AI systems for accountability or future reuse. We wanted to better understand how these multifunctional AI teams use machine learning interfaces when developing AI products. To this end, we interviewed nine practitioners at Apple across roles such as engineering, product management, and design. We asked them questions such as what tools they currently use, what challenges they face, and what their ideal workflows would look like. We found that while machine learning interfaces can be an important tool in ML development, they have multiple limitations that prevent their wider use. First, many teams often build one-off tools or visualizations for their specific use cases, which can be challenging to reuse or apply to new models and data. Second, many common interfaces have limited expressivity and interactivity. For example, practitioners can't dig deeper into the insights they find in static data sheets. Lastly, insights are often hard to share with other stakeholders, um, such as charts and computational notebooks that need specialized software to run and reproduce. To address these challenges, we aim to develop a framework that was reusable, explorable, and shareable. Such a framework should be consistent and easy to use, allow for flexible experimentation, and enable communication across diverse AI and ML teams. The system we developed from these design goals is called Symphony. The primary concept behind Symphony is an expandable set of components with synchronized interactive visualizations. These components can be used across different mediums, either computational notebooks or web-based dashboards and reports. This allows both engineers to do exploratory model development and testing teams and product managers to create easy to use dashboards. Thanks, Alex. Let's now take a look at Symphony in action. We start off with the code-based exploration side of Symphony where you simply import the Python packages for each of the visualization components you want to use. Then you load up a data frame based on which you want to use Symfony. Uh, and here we look at it, it's basically some data points uh, as rows and some, some uh, attributes as columns. We give the data frame to Symfony and then we can load up different visualization components. Here we load up a readme file. And next we load up the summary view which uh, automatically provides a summary of the data frame you provided. Down below in this list view where we view all the uh, data items, we can do some filtering. And as you see, it updates in all the visualization components that we loaded up. So all the summary charts are updated and the list. Once we're done uh, adding all our widgets and we want to share our insights with uh, other team members or stakeholders, we can export Symfony to shareable dashboards. These shareable dashboards contain the same visualization widgets as the code-based exploration environment. And you can do the same interactions, such as filtering. As you see, the lists and the summary charts are filtered the same way. Now, for this dataset, we're interested in different groups. So what we want to look at is the split of data between test and train. And here we see that in this group, there's a lot of very similar cars between test and train, which might not be desirable. And so we flag them. In this scatterplot view, you see that hard to classify samples are often these black background samples, which are PNGs, which are unknown or uncommon in the dataset. Finally, let's look at how we can share insights between dashboards and code-based environments in Symfony. 
In this example, we select a subset of data points that are labeled as airplanes, but classified as birds. As one can see, these images don't really look like birds, but they're all airplanes. So what we do next is we copy their IDs. We can paste this information into a notebook environment where we can simply set a Python variable to those IDs. We can then further analyze these instances in Python, but we can even go one step further and set Symfony's state in this notebook to contain these selected IDs. As you can see, Symfony automatically updates and displays the selected instances as set in code. Now that we've seen Symfony in action, let's take a look under the hood and peek into Symfony's system architecture. Symfony takes backing data as input, as shown in our demo. Then, interaction tools can be used to manipulate the data. It can be UI-based or code-based interaction. Manipulations are saved in a shared state, which is synchronized across all active visualization components that you load into Symfony. As mentioned before, Symfony has different wrappers for different environments. We provide a notebook-based wrapper and a dashboard wrapper. For Symfony. If you want to add new components to Symfony, you can do so by writing just a few lines of TypeScript. In this example, we implemented Neo, a hierarchical confusion matrix visualization, in just about 50 lines. Since Symfony is wrapped in a Python wrapper, once you finish your component, you can bundle it as a Python package and upload it on PyPI. In conclusion, Symfony adopts the idea of task-specific bespoke visualization components, which are very important for ML analysis. New components can be added, as I've just shown, in just a few lines of TypeScript. Components can be reused in different environments, such as computational notebooks or standalone dashboards, but you could also imagine implementing new platform wrappers, and therefore they can be used by different stakeholders in the ML pipeline. In turn, Symfony fosters a shared organizational understanding of data and models and encourages the creation of accurate, responsible, and robust AI products. So that's our new framework, Symfony, which can be used to compose interactive interfaces for machine learning.